Before this video begins, I would just like to make a quick note that I'll be uploading two versions. I'll be uploading a 360 degree version the other video. and a standard version which will have the angles picked uh, in post. This video. So be sure to check out both versions to get the best review of this camera. I'll be using the same shots in both versions of the video, but the narration will differ between the two videos to explain the different features associated with each video format. Hi, I'm Neil with Trip the Road, and today I will be reviewing my new GoPro Fusion. You're probably watching this video because you read the two and three star reviews for this camera on Amazon, and you want to see how the camera performs before you drop six or seven hundred dollars on one. I should first point out that you should have at least a basic understanding of how to edit in Adobe Premiere if you intend to use this camera for video purposes, in order to get the most out of it. While you can get great video with the provided software, there are some creative limitations. I think this is why many people are rating the camera poorly. Aside from initial launch firmware issues, people don't understand how to work with 360 degree video files, especially when it comes to publishing to social media. If you plan on using this camera primarily for stills, don't worry about knowing how to use Premiere. You can use a number of popular photo editing programs, including Photoshop. As you can see from the unboxing, the GoPro comes with a number of high quality accessories to get you started. However, you will need two things. An SD card, and a second SD card. One for each hemisphere. With the camera set up and charged, let's go see it in action. This is the first video after hitting power for the first time. In addition to taking spherical video and stills, this camera allows you to produce traditional video content by picking the viewing angle and field of view in post. This will require some intermediate knowledge of how to use Premiere Pro, as you will have to use the Effect Controls panel. If you want to change the field of view and angles mid-clip, you will need to have an understanding of how keyframes work, too. If you already edit with Premiere but have never used these features before, don't worry. They are fairly easy to learn with a little patience and there are videos on how to use the plugins provided with the camera software. These plugins are also somewhat GPU intensive and I'll make a note at the end of the video about the problems I had with my hardware. In short, if you don't use GPU acceleration while you're editing, you're gonna have a bad time. If your GPU is older, you're gonna have a bad time. If your processor is older, you're gonna have a bad time. The footage this camera takes from a moving car is probably my favorite. It allows you to see the world in motion from a number of interesting perspectives. With the camera centered on the highest point of the vehicle, switching to a tiny planet perspective gives the illusion of a bird's eye view. With a little bit of a fisheye, of course. As I mentioned in the spherical version of this video, camera viewing angle will hold, regardless of camera movement, when full stabilization is enabled. The angle can of course be changed manually when using the reframe plugin. While vlogging, you can rotate the camera hands-free so you can focus on telling your story. You can really get creative with some of these angles. Even though this shot is heavily distorted, it does a good job of explaining how big this bridge is. Using the tiny planet perspective around large structures makes for very interesting video as well. And here's that same exact clip with a more traditional perspective. This clip does a good job of demonstrating GoPro's multi-axis stabilization, which uses the camera's onboard multi-axis accelerometer to tell the renderer how to position the footage. This does a really good job of conveying how rough the terrain is, and in a way, emulates human head movement in such an environment where a traditional camera would not. You can also change the angle as something is happening, as you didn't have to anticipate when it was going to happen. Time-lapse footage will also appear more stable, and you can apply movement that traditionally would have to be done by mechanical means. While you have the ability to pick your angle later in post, there is some compromise to this. 
Since both lenses are fixed wide angles, you cannot zoom in on fine detail, such as this paper target. But being able to set up the camera without having to aim or line up your shot is incredibly convenient. It allowed me to enjoy the moment and pick the best viewing angle later, in both 360 mode and reframe mode. GoPro calls it the shoot then point camera, no pun intended with this footage. You may also notice that the rapid pressure changes from the gun firing is interfering with the full axis stabilization mode. I could easily re-render this video file with that turned off to eliminate that issue, since the camera is stationary. At regular sound levels, audio is pretty good, except for in windy environments. If you plan to use this camera outdoors, be sure to buy an external audio recording source. However, indoors, the multi-axis microphone does a great job of picking up casual conversation and other noise. In lower light, the multi-axis stabilization also causes this weird, shaky, blurry mess. I find another terminal. This one does not want to work. Using keyframes, I can make a tiny plant and I did it wrong. That's way wrong, but I'm gonna throw it in here because it's kind of cool at the same time. All right, let's try this again. Let's see if I can get it right. Take two, I think I figured it out. Yep, now it's working. Okay, so you can do this cool tiny planet thing by using the keyframes in the keyframe editor. You can also do the inverse for a hamster wheel effect. Another issue that many have talked about that I haven't quite had an issue with yet is the difference in light level in each hemisphere, particularly during sunsets. Since the front and rear halves record to their own SD cards, I'm not really sure if the exposure is controlled by a central processor or independently by each camera. Another review out there may have the answer to that question. So what about 360 stills? I was very impressed with those as well, especially since the GoPro is capable of shooting raw images. You must first, however, use GoPro's rendering software to export the proprietary format to TIFF before editing in Photoshop. The stills displayed here have little to no editing done to them, so this is what you should expect to see after stitching. While image grain is apparent in low light images, the camera's manual mode allows you to perform long exposures, which may help get the detail you need in order to correct it during editing. All right, so everything you've heard up to this point has been fairly positive, so let's talk about the cons. Be prepared to be prepared to buy lots of hard drive space. Approximately every minute of raw video files, before stitching or including the audio, will take up about one gigabyte at the highest resolution. And the stitched files will be even bigger for some reason. I should also mention real quick that I've run into a few problems while editing this version of the review. The computer I normally edit on was assembled in 2011 and has a Sandy Bridge i5. It's also equipped with an ATI graphics card from around that same era, before AMD bought them. I had zero issues editing the spherical version, but when I started using the GoPro Reframe plugin, I started getting errors. I ultimately decided to edit this version on my laptop, which has an i7 and an NVIDIA graphics card from around the 2016 era. GoPro has also stated on their website that their software and plugins do not work on older systems. So I cannot recommend this camera if you use an older computer for editing. Second, the camera itself, while both rugged and waterproof, has two very vulnerable pieces of glass protruding out from it. GoPro advertises these cameras on tops of helmets and even underwater, but they currently do not offer a replacement plan or spare parts for when the glass gets scratched or cracked. I haven't tested it underwater, and don't really intend to test that underwater, but I'm sure someone out there has got an excellent underwater video. Number three. This camera at the time of making this review costs a hefty $700. There are a number of other 360 cameras out there at a much lower price point that ultimately do the same thing. I decided to go with the GoPro camera because, despite the fact that the brand has been floundering in recent times, I trust them to stand behind their product better than some of the other more generic companies out there. GoPro will probably reduce the price of this camera too, as they usually do a few months after their launches. Well, that concludes this video. I may eventually post a tutorial on how to use this camera and how to edit with it, as I have already found a number of creative uses for it in the few weeks of ownership. Be sure to check out some of our other videos, and don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and put your favorite timestamp down below. My, My favorite, favorite part, part was 151. This angle can of course change manually when using the reframe.